Hey everybody, JC here. Welcome to Simple Builds Volume 4, Quest Quick Kits. So virtually every major rocket company has beginner, starter, introductory, level 1, whatever they want to call it, uh, rockets. Most people get started with Estes rockets since they're probably the most widely available. So looking at the 2021 catalog, you can see that they have quite a number of beginner rockets, 13 in total. Now, that doesn't even count the ones that come in the launch sets. So beginner, 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 okay. beginner, beginner. So that gives them a total of 22 beginner rockets. Okay. Now, one thing about all these beginner rockets is that they have plastic nose cones and plastic fin cans. Okay. Now, some of them snap together, okay? snap together, no glue required, no assembly required. Snap together. Okay. Snap together. Okay. Don't require painting, some of them. You know, so it depends on the model. Now today's subject is going to be Quest. Now, technically, it's Quest by Aerotech, a division of RCS, that also has a number of introductory rockets. Now, their line is designated as Level 1 rockets. Now, they have a bit more variety than Estes and offer a total of 18 rockets that are essentially divided into two categories. Those with plastic fins and fin cans and nose cones, and those with other types of fins, balsa or even tube fins. So, the plastic group has a subgroup called Quest Calls Quick Kits. Not only do they have all plastic parts, but they also require no painting. Now, of the other rockets, a few of them even have through-the-wall fin construction. I'm not sure how those should be in level 1 category, but Quest only has 1, 2, and 3, so maybe just give me a place to put them. So let's get some Quest rockets up on the workbench. And we can, and we can take a closer look at what the offering is. So they're behind me, so I'm having to reach around and get them all. I guess I could have just cut the video and put them on there, but hey, you know, production, it's tough. Okay, so Quest has five quick kits. Okay. Now, here's four of them in, in kit form. Penetrator, the Quick Q, the Astra 3, and the Triton X. And then here's the fifth one, is the Seeker. Hey, I already built this one. Now, this one is kind of interesting. Uh, I picked it up a couple years ago as what I call a freebie or a shipping bonus. And what I mean by that is that with the way the company worked, if you buy a certain amount of product, they will ship your stuff for free. So I found out that by adding this rocket to my total, the actual shipping cost that I saved was more than the cost of the rocket. So... I think I actually end up getting the rocket for free and save $3. So that works out pretty well. So looking at the face card, now this, this rocket was bought before these. So this is the face card that came with it. Now you'll notice that uh, they don't exactly match. Um, I don't know. Now I did put different fins on it and I put a different nose cone. This one's purple, I actually painted it purple. Um, so, but you'll see if I turn it to the back, very interestingly, it says motors, A64, B64, C63, C65. Those are not Quest motors. Okay. Or I should say Aerotech motors. Now on the front, it says, ooh, flies best with QJet by Aerotech. And then it has Aerotech QJet motors. Well, that's because... Back when this thing was packaged up, you can see here it says, manufactured by Quest Aerospace, a division of RCS motor components. Now, Aerotech is also owned by RCS, but at the, mo at the time they had not been merged together okay, to become Quest by Aerotech. So you can see here it says, quick kit, 15 to 45 minutes, 
self-adhesive decals, 14 inch parachute. Now the parachute does not come assembled. So that's, you know, as to the amount of time. And it has the quick kit plastic fin unit. Now, what exactly does that mean? Well, this fin can is two parts that you glue together and then you glue the fins on. Okay, and then it has a plastic transition and it has a plastic nose cone. Now, one thing you may not realize about Quest rockets is they use non-standard tubes. So, for instance, let's see if it says on this, this one right here. Ah, yeah, see, it says diameter is T30, 1.18 inches, 30 millimeters. So, that is not a BT-55, and it's not a BT-60. So they use their own sizing, which are usually even millimeters, 30, 35, etc. Now, interestingly enough, this smaller tube is a BT-50, since this is a BT-50 nose cone. So if we look at the kits themselves, and they're all basically the same. Okay, we have our two-piece fin can with integrated launch lug. We have our four fins that glue on. We have a plastic transition. We have a plastic nose cone that is, uh, I believe, right there. It's hard to see here. Yeah. And then we have this transition. In fact, we have two transitions. And then we have, here's the motor retainer. And then there's this gray tube, which this fits inside the fin can. And this is where your motor goes. Okay, so it's kind of similar to some SD's rocket kits, uh, but they typically have the motor inside the plastic without this tube here. Okay, and if we look at one of the other ones, you'll see it's basically the same thing. Okay, two-piece fin can, okay, four fins, motor retainer, show tube, body tube already colored, nose cone already colored. Quick cue, you'll see the same thing. And it's got stickers, so you see it's already purple and yellow. And penetrator, same thing. Now, this one does have a tube crinkle right there that might be tough to fix given the odd sizes of their tubes. But, well, you know, I'll figure it out. So, what we're going to do is we're going to go and look at these, find out how hard are they to build. How do they compare to, say, an E2X? Um, from Estes. You know, I mean, I think, the, and these are fairly reasonable price, about the same as Estes. Maybe a little harder to find. You might will probably have to mail order them. But, you know, I have flown my Seeker before, and it flew just fine, no problems at all. The, if there's one feature I don't necessarily like, that's having this launch slug only down here. On the, this is a pretty long rocket. And it's got a launch lock only at the bottom. Uh, if I were to build this again, I would probably put another launch lug up here someplace. Um, but I'd have to take a closer look at it. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is uh, we're going we're gonna to crack one of these babies open. And I think in this case, we're going to use the Astra 3. The Astra is sort of their uh, flagship. So we're going to crack this open. Let's look at the Astra real quick so it flies up to 1,200 feet. 15 inches long, uh, uses the T30, 1.18 inches. It weighs two ounces, has the same 14 inch parachute, plastic fin assembly, self adhesive decals. It says it requires assembly. White glue, plastic cement, finishing supplies, launch system, rocket motors are not included. That's pretty normal. And it says to use Black Max A34 for the first flight, and then B4s, C12, C12, D16. And then on the white lightning side, B64, C18, ooh, and the dreaded D20, the uh, Viking E2X killer. It does say that other brands of rocket motors with similar type, i.e. power designation, should be okay for use. So my guess is that you could fly an Estes A83, it is two ounces, so that would be fine. Uh, a B44, B64, C6s, C5, any 18 millimeter motor. Uh, that's at least an A3, and you you might even be able to fly this with an A10. I don't know. 
So we'll, uh, we'll crack this baby open, we'll take a closer look at it, and we'll see what it takes to assemble. And you notice that it says, this is a model kit, not a toy. Unfortunately, it does say some components made in China, but, well, you know, these days, what can you do? So it's see, it's manufactured by Quest Aerotech Division, RCS in Utah. All right, so uh, when I come back, I'll have this all open up, and then we can take a closer look at it. Okay, I'm back. Uh, got the kit all open. And so you can see all the individual parts. Here's the body tube. Okay, let's see. Is it really 30 millimeters? It looks like 30 millimeter outside diameter. That's true. Okay, it's got a plastic blow molded nose cone. You can see the, the seams. That's pretty standard. It's going to cry a little sanding there. Okay, it's got a little round of a hook on it, a little hole in there. Um, so if you, if you needed to add some weight, you probably have to make that hole bigger or put another hole here. Um, so it's okay. Um, so here's the fin can. It's two parts. Looks like they've got little, uh, oh, I got it backwards. Little guide pins and holes, so it snaps together. Okay. Now, I would say this goes into the body tube. This is where this retaining ring would go. I'd have to get, I mean, I gotta look at the instructions, obviously. And then uh, I would guess this is where you tie the shock cord. I should remember, I built the secret two years ago, so I don't really remember. Um, and then the fins just slide in here. And then, yeah, just so some plastic model cement or some super glue or something like that. It should work just fine. Okay, now it does come with two shock cords. So it comes with a piece of Kevlar, which is 18 inches long. And then it comes with an interesting piece of round elastic. I think I, think I replaced that on my, my seeker. Uh, it's also 18 inches long. See, on this rocket, this body tube, is how long is this um it's, it's like it's uh eight and a half inches long according to the ruler here so this is probably a little short uh it's probably on the minimum side i would probably replace this uh with a piece of eighth inch um, elastic that was say 24 inches long or maybe a little longer maybe 30 so th this might work out just fine like i said i'm pretty sure i replaced it in the seeker um, okay uh here's your stickers with little dotted lines where you cut them out okay, it even shows you a pair of scissors that you just should cut it out with okay so you go goes up around the nose cone and up around where the fin can goes and then Astra, yeah, the regular Astra, I believe, is the one with uh, balsa fins, and they actually threw the wall. So let's see, what we got here. Okay, this is the same exact parachute that came with my seeker, and not assembled. Now I'm lazy, so I will probably just leave this. I would, I would guess, if I were to look hard enough, I would probably still find the seeker one unbuilt. Okay. Um, Seems like it's about the same as you get with an Estes rocket. Um, it's not very heavy, so you probably don't need to use a nylon one, but you could. So here's the face card. You see there's nothing, the Seeker had a whole bunch of information on both sides on the back. It does point out that plastic bags can be dangerous. Okay, so let's see here. Okay, so here's the instructions. Okay, we have uh, Thing about flying your model rocket it shows you, oh, you should follow the NAR safety code. And it tells you other parts that you can buy from Quest. Lift off pad, launch controller, cable extension for E to G motors. Launch controller requires a nine volt snap top lithium battery. Okay. First fire initiators, wadding. Okay. Shows you what you do to prepare it. How to fold your chute. 
Well, they, like me, advocate uh, wrapping the shroud lines around your chute, which is what I do, have done for years. Some people don't like that, but my thought is it keeps it compact in the tube and it's le less likely to uh, balloon out and block the tube. Okay. All right, so uh, what else do we have in here? Oh, it's a green thing. What's that? Launch procedures. Okay, this tells you how to put your first fire initiators into your motors using the, the Q-Pick. That's the new thing. They, the old one had the little tube that you jammed in there. The new ones have this Q-Pick. Okay. Flip it. Oh, has the NAR safety code. Very nice. Okay. I mean, they're, they're covering all... I mean, they are trying to be safe. They are covering all the bases here. You know, stay away from trees, power lines, Don't no brown grass, high weeds, flammable materials. They rinse the NAR safety code again. Okay. All right, so let's see what we have here. What are the instructions? According to this, it says you will need a hobby knife and plastic cement. They show the white shot cord, which is the elastic here. They show the yellow one, which is the Kevlar. Parachute stickers, fin cans, gray motor tube, locking ring, motor locking ring. Okay, the first thing they have you do is tie the two cords together. Then tie it to the fin can. Then you glue the fin can together. And while you're doing that, you put the... Oh, there it is. <laughs> Rolled away. Uh, you put this inside. So I'm guessing those little notches... Yeah, there we go. So it's going to fit like this. Yeah, all right. That, this other one will go in here. Now, interestingly, I'm not sure I like that too much. I don't see anything keeping it well centered. Oh, maybe it's this thing. Okay, yeah. All right, so this, when it goes in, it goes in around that. Let's see if I can figure this out. You know, I, I did go to college, so. Okay. All right, so it looks like that goes in there, and so that keeps it centered. All right. Yeah, don't get stuck already. Yeah. Okay, so, all right, I feel better about it now. Like I said, it's been a long time since I built my seeker, so I don't really remember how that works. Uh, I put it away. Okay, so then, then you glue the fin cans on. It put the, little, the rear locking ring onto the motor housing, so it looks like you don't glue that on there. It looks like it just sticks on. Uh, then tie the white cord uh, around the nose cone. I will probably substitute... Um, a snap swivel for that. Now, I don't think I have a different nose cone that would fit in there if something ever happened to this one. But uh, nonetheless, snap swivels are my thing, so we'll use those. Uh, then it shows you how to build the parachute, how to put the parachute in there. Interestingly, it shows you how to put the parachute in there first before you put the stickers on. Okay. Kind of strange, but all right. Whoops, sorry about that. And then flying a rocket. Install the igniter and motor. Put on the launch pad. So always following our safety code. So I mean, they are they are covering their bases. They they are trying to make sure that everyone is safe and has a good time. Okay. So what I'm going to do. When I come back here, get some of this stuff cleaned out, I think I'll get myself another piece of elastic, not the personal quest, but, uh, um, and the snap swivel, and I think I need anything else. Nope. And then, uh, I'll actually time myself building it. It says ready to launch in 15 to 45 minutes. 
and we'll see how long it takes me to actually build this thing. All right, well, when we come back, we'll uh, start building. Okay, it looks like it's time to go ahead and put everything together. I have everything all laid out. Uh, I have replaced the elastic that they provided with some 1 8 inch elastic. That's the size I use for two ounce rockets or so. Now, one other thing I'm going to do is I am going to replace their Kevlar with the Kevlar that I normally use. Now, there's nothing wrong with theirs, just like there's nothing wrong with their elastic. Um, I just, I'm more comfortable using stuff I'm used to using. And this is a little heavier. This is 150 pound. I, I'm not sure what size this is. I'll just say smaller. So I cut a piece approximately the same length. So I'm going to go ahead and use that instead. I won't throw this away, of course, because uh, Rocketeers don't throw things away. You just use it somewhere else. So in fact, uh, I was curious. And so I did take a look at my seeker and I did replace theirs with some 3 16 inch. So keeping in line with what I normally do. So I took a very close look at the instructions and I'm not really happy about the order in which they have you do things. So here's my point. Now the first thing they have you do is put the shock cord together, which is fine, except then they have you tie it to the housing, okay, right there. The problem with that is that means that everything else you do that involves this piece of plastic, i.e. the fin, half the fin can, now is dragging the shock cord around with it. So you're putting it together, then you're gluing the fin can into, you can see how they're sticking it up into the tube, which is, I don't know why they do that. Um, <clears throat> and so before you even put the fins on, you're gluing it to the body, which doesn't really make a sense. I mean, I would much rather complete all the fin can work, then attach the shock cord, and then glue it into the body. And that's the approach I'm gonna use. Okay. And I also have a snap swivel here instead of tying things to the nose cone. So the other thing, I, you know, I, I realize I'm changing a whole bunch of stuff, but the reason I'm doing that is it will make building it easier. For instance, I'm gonna put the stickers on before I glue it together. The reason for that is it's easier to manipulate the tube if you don't have the fins hanging around the back. Okay. Also, I have marked the tube with three spots where I'm going to punch some holes in it so, uh, for altimeters. So, uh, that way, they'll get good readings on the way up. So, you know, the, all, all optional things. I mean, you could build it exactly the way they have here, and I'm sure it would be fine. It's just that, you know, I do have a lot of experience building rockets, and I prefer to build them in a way that I feel more comfortable with. The other thing, and yes, there's another change. Okay, this is plastic model cement. This is what they recommend you use. Now, here's the thing. It does say 15 to 45 minutes. Now, if you look at this, and it's really hard to read because it's so tiny, but it says that it uh, allow two hours dry time. Di allow two hours dry time. Okay, well, that, that's not 15 to 45 minutes by any stretch of the imagination. So I'm going to use super glue. So I have two kinds here. I have liquid and I have gel. And I use both of them when I build things because I use them for different reasons, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do uh, is I'm going to uh, start a uh, stopwatch. So we'll see how long it takes me to actually build it. Okay, there we go. And I'm gonna start with the shock cord. So uh, instead of tying them in this double knot they have, what I do is I'm gonna tie a loop in the end of mine and the reason I do this is it makes it easier to replace the elastic because the elastic is the part that is most likely to, uh, oh, where did my, uh, oh, there they are, is uh, most likely to get damaged. So if you make it so it's easy to replace the elastic, then you'll find that it, overall it's easier to deal with. Okay, so there's a nice little knot here. Um, now I will put the super glue on it later after I get it all done because that way it'll be uh, easier to deal with now. All right, so then I'll tie this on. I'll use a double half hitch. Um, so, like I said, you know, there's probably nothing wrong with those instructions. Um, I doubt when I built the seeker that I followed them exactly. 
Um, I, I really got one for following directions exactly, but I did carefully read through them to see things I might want to change. So, okay, so we've got that there. Nice tight knot. Okay, I'll clip off that excess. And yes, I could use scissors, but just as easy to use those. Okay, we got that. Last thing I'm gonna do before I consider the shot cord pretty much ready to go is I'll put on this snap swivel and then we'll uh, move on to the rest of it. Of course, it's not cooperating. There we go. There's a rule I have that anything done on camera takes two to three times longer and you will make more mistakes because you're trying to do it perfectly because some things are very hard to undo. You know, it's really hard to undo gluing something into the wrong end of a body tube. So, so you want to be more careful, but for some reason being more careful doesn't necessarily mean you do it more correctly. Okay, there's that. Away. Okay, here's my shock cord. All right, so I'm going to put a little super glue. And, you know, of course, some people don't, you know, whoops, oops, brand new uh, thing of super glue. Some people don't like to put this on Kevlar because they say it makes it too brittle. And you know, I haven't experienced that, but I do not dispute what they're saying because obviously if you put super glue on something, it will make it more brittle. I just don't know what the effect's going to be. So I'm going to put this off to the side here so it can dry and we'll move on. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is put together the fin can. Okay. So the fin can essentially is of three parts. Okay, we have this part, we have the motor tube, and then we have uh, the other part. Okay, so there's little pins here that go into these little holes. Okay, so I'm going to position this on here. Okay, and these are actually what the, those are the motor blocks. Those are things that actually stop the motor from moving forward. Okay, so hopefully those will last a long time. Okay. So we'll put a little super glue in each one of these holes. The pins fit in. There, 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 there. And then uh, I'll put a little more here and there. You gotta be careful when you do stuff like this because, like, there's a ring that goes on here on the bottom. And according to the instructions, it's not glued on. So you got to be careful not to uh, accidentally do something that's make it's gonna, not going to fit. Okay. So I'm going to put the other pin in. There we go. Okay. Still kind of weird, but all right. Okay, so that's that. Okay. So now they have you immediately glue this into the body tube. Okay. I don't want to do that. So while that's hardening, I'm going to go ahead and punch the holes in my body tube. Uh, this is a 1 8 inch punch. So what I do is I make little marks. Okay, there's three of them there, there, and there. And then I just sight them through the hole here on the bottom. And then I punch the hole. So now I have to remember that this is the end where the nose cone goes. All right, so there we go. Nice evenly punched holes. So the nose cone will go in this end, the motor mount fin cam will go in this end. Okay, put this away. All right, so the glue should have set up pretty quickly. Now, I did test fit the fins beforehand, and I actually had to trim one a little bit. So the way this works is you slide this into here. Oh, of course, there we go. And then just slide it all the way up. Now, this ring will go on afterwards and lock these in position. Now, the funny thing is you don't glue this in, which I found interesting, but okay. Um, so you can either put glue on this or you can put glue on this. Okay, I'm going to put it on the fin so that I can make sure I get the surfaces that I want to have glue on them. 
This is very much like uh, gluing in some uh, Estes fins to one of their plastic fin cans. Okay, so we'll just put that in here and slide it forward. And uh, you know, kind of hard to get these misaligned. I mean, hopefully they will line up pretty easily. Okay. We'll go on to the next one, we'll do the same exact thing. I mean, as far as I can tell, the main difference between this and one of the Estes plastic fin cans is that this has the uh, paper motor tube inside it, and the Estes ones uh, have built up plastic instead. So, well, don't know which one's better. Uh, my guess is that they each have their own benefits. Probably the worst thing about using super glue on anything is the fact that any tiny little squeeze out will stick to your fingers because that was the original purpose of it, which was to uh, replace stitches so you could use it for incisions on skin. And I think that's why it sticks to skin so well. That one. Well, I think that's the one I actually had to trim a little bit. It was still a little tight. Now, if after you get this all in there, you feel like they aren't glued in well enough, you can always add a little extra super glue to the outside. Um, I try to avoid that if possible because it just kind of makes a big mess. Okay, so fins look pretty straight. Now to lock in the bottom part of the fin can, you use this ring. And you can see where here, it goes slides down, there's little notches there, slide in these holes, and they twist counterclockwise or anti-clockwise if you're from the UK. Okay, and each one of those little ridges goes right behind one of the fins so they can't slide out. Now, it seems weird to me that you glue the fins in but don't glue this on. It seems more likely that you would not glue the fins on, you would glue this on. So I don't know. I'm just going to follow the directions there. Okay, so now we have our fin can. The fins all appear to be, it's not exactly square, but this isn't precision, so. All right, so the next thing we need to do is, looks like we need to attach the shock cord. So, um, now there's a couple ways you could do this. You could try and pass it between these two, but it looks like the simplest way would just be to, uh, maybe, oh, maybe that's why it's so thin, because it's got to go through that tiny little hole. I did not test fit this. Oh, luckily, even the incompetent get lucky once in a while. Okay, so we'll tie... Uh, not here. I want to make sure I pull the knot up so it's not sticking out wider than the body tube would be. And I will put a little glue on that. And then I will snip off the end here. Okay. Okay, now before I glue it into 
the body tube, I want to do a couple things. First of all, I want to pass the shock cord back down through it. Okay, so this will keep it out of the way. Okay, all right, that. The other thing I want to do is I want to rough this up a little bit because we're, you know, we're trying to attach it to a uh, paper tube here. Okay. All right. So we'll just take a little 120 here. Fill little tiny ridges in there, and that'll help the gripping on this spot. Okay, test fit. Remember the opposite side of the holes. Okay, it looks like it goes in there pretty easily. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a bead of the gel in here and then I'm going to put in some of the liquid. Now, the reason you... Oh, actually, before I want to do that, I'm going to put the stickers on first. Oh, I almost forgot. I almost forgot to do one of the things I was going to do. Okay. Well, good. That'll give me a chance to try. All right. So we'll trim this off. See, that's a problem sometimes when you do things not according to the directions, you forget what you're doing. Now, this has you chop it off a little. Okay, well, hopefully, it'll still wrap all the way around. I mean, I could have cut this out er earlier, but then it wouldn't have added into the uh, build time. And so, let's see, according to things, this was, what are we at here? 13 minutes so far. So I'm going to be on the other end of 15, that's for sure. Okay, so I'll cut the other one out. So these go around the top and the bottom of the tube. And then the names go uh, along the body tube. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna cut those scissors up. I may, may use that sticker somewhere. Never know. Okay. I know the excitement of watching me cut these out is pretty tantalizing. I may uh, speed the video up during this. Now, if I remember correctly, I'd have to look for sure, but I think the seekers were actually already uh, cut out. I don't remember off the top of my head. It's been a while since I built it, but I think they were already cut out. I think they were just peeled, just peel them away. Well, the consistency of inconsistency, I guess, where you have kits that are of the same setting set up the all quick kits but not all quick kits are the same okay all right all right let's get all the things that aren't stickers out of the way here Let's go check the directions. Oh, right there, so that's where they go. 
it was in here someplace. Okay, so the thicker stripe is toward the end of the tube. Okay. Now the eternal struggle, struggle getting the sticky paper away from the rest of the sticker. Now, I will tell you ahead of time, I am terrible at putting these things on squarely. I have a hard time doing it, and half the time it goes on crooked. Huh, that's interesting. They have you cut it, but it doesn't go all the way across. Now, that's, that's an unfortunate design problem. Because I cut it just at the little marks. So, huh, I guess I should have test fit that. But the average person wouldn't have done that, so I don't feel that bad. Oh. Interesting. I actually had a cut mark. Okay. I'll go to the other end now. Same thing. Wide end goes on the bottom, toward the end of the two. Oh, oh. Okay, so then Astra goes well. It goes between the fins. So what I'll do is, uh, okay, just like like this, I will uh, make sure that when I put the fin can on that I center the name in between so to the fins. Wow, I am doing incredibly well in getting these stickers off. That is crazy. All right, that's uh, okay. Now, luckily, of course, there's no launch leg to deal with because it's part of the fin can. Okay, Astra 3 on one side. And the other one will be below the hole. Come on, get off there. All right. Okay, so not too bad. Okay. Not quite the same distance up, but you can't see them since they're diametrically opposed to each other. I probably should have put the gaps on the stripes in the same way. Oh, well. You know, if you did things right every time, what fun would that be? Okay, so now we're going to put this on just like that. Okay, as I said before, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some thick gel around there, and then I'm going to put some thin in there also. And the idea is that the thin will soak into the tube, and the thick will stick to the plastic and to the other uh, super glue. So, okay, in there. The good thing is it doesn't dry really quick when you have the gel in there. And so it, uh, even with the liquid going on top of it, it should be fine. All right, so we'll put this on here. Switch it around, put that between two of the things. Um, let's see here. Oh, I have a flashlight right here. All right, looks pretty good. Okay, let's see here. All right, I will not attach this to the nose cone because I gotta wait for that to dry and solidify. Um, 
and this would go right up there. Okay, so I'm going to consider this to be done. And uh, according to this, it took 21 minutes. So if we account for drawing and some other things, I would say you can easily build this in uh, 25 minutes. So that's well within the 15 to 45. Now we do have to uh, let the glue dry, make sure it's nice and hard. Um, and then I'll need to uh, trim this off. So I'm gonna do some housekeeping here. But overall, um, that was pretty easy to build. Um, like I said, I, I did things slightly differently. Um, I added a few steps by adding in the vent holes um, and substituting some parts. But like I said, I think the parts that came with it would probably be adequate. Um, I just like to do things a certain way. I think doing it in a different order actually made it a lot easier since I wasn't having to manipulate the tube with the fin cam attached. You know, putting the stickers on when it was... Uh, separated from the fin can definitely made things easier. So what I'm going to do now is off camera, of course, I'm going to build the other models. Now, if there's something I do that's sort of out of the ordinary or different from this particular build, then uh, I will go ahead and uh, film that and put this in as part of the video. But you can see that the quick kits, you know, 15 to 45 minutes, definitely. Um, and uh, just make sure you have your recommended motor. Start with something small, an A or a B, uh, just in case it's unstable for some reason. It shouldn't be, but it does happen on occasion. Now, uh, this one does have, this nose cone does have some ridges on it that you, know, you might want to trim. Now, the problem with that is if you got to be careful, if you sand it, it's going to make it look strange. So you might want to use... Like your hobby knife and slide it along there and cut it off. But I would say this build is done. It doesn't say anything about having to add nose weight or anything. I assume that if it needed it, it just talks about how to launch it. Okay, then uh, uh, next time you see me, I will probably be either highlighting a change from another one of the builds or possibly just saying, here, we're all done. Okay, well, thanks for watching this, and I'll be back if I have something important to say about one of the other builds. Hey, everybody. So I've been working on the Quick Q Quick Kit. Uh, I've got the fin can all done. It's all ready to be put together with the rocket. I, this is my new Kevlar, my new uh, elastic, so we're all good there. I put the stickers on. Unfortunately, the hmm, bit of a design problem there, but okay. Now, this one's different than the Astra 3 in that it has two pieces of body tube. Okay? The purple one is the lower one, which will attach to the fin can. And then the this is the upper one. I've already punched the holes for the altimeter. And they provide a coupler. And so the instructions in step two say to put glue inside the blue body tube, insert the coupler about halfway, twist back and forth to spread glue, let glue dry for at least two minutes, then put glue inside the yellow body tube, insert the other into the coupler. Okay. Uh, that's fine instructions, except one thing I think they should do is have you mark the middle of the coupler. Now, the reason I say that is that, you know, and you're in the, trying to get this thing in here, if you go and you put it in too far, how far out do you, do you pull it out too far? So it's very difficult with white, with, excuse me, with yellow glue. And you get stuck in there too far, it may not come back out. So you want to know when you're pushing it in, how far to stick it in there so that you can push it in and then very slowly come up to the mark. So do you have to do this? Of course not. But I highly recommend you do it. So what we're going to do is we're going to measure this. And it is an inch and a quarter. Okay, so that means that halfway is going to be five eighths of an inch. So we'll get out a pencil here. 
Mark it at 5 eighths. Okay. If you want to mark it more than one place, that's also fine. And then, of course, you always want to test fit. Okay, it seems to fit fine. Fits fine. Okay, great. All right, so let's get some glue in here. And with any luck, I'll put in way too much. Um, we'll, of course, get out the always needed paper towel. Okay. Get some glue in here. And then we'll uh, proceed to the gluing. Now the coupler has a fibrous outside, so it's not it's not super smooth. So we don't really have to sand it down or do anything with it. Okay, so now let's spread the glue around. Oh, I may have actually put the right amount in here. That is crazy talk. Okay, All right, so I will find my mark. There it is. And then we'll put it in, give it a twist. All right, and so it should stick out five eighths of an inch, and it does. Okay, all right, so it says to wait a couple minutes, and the idea is. That you want to wait because when you're sticking it together, if you get any friction here, you don't want to accidentally jam it all the way inside because you're never going to get it out. You'd end up having to cut the tube off. Yeah, so there's a little bit of a glue buildup inside, so I'm just going to smear it around. There we go. Because, hey, you no. Know, is it really a build if you don't get glue on your fingers? I don't think so. Okay. So while we're waiting for that to glue... Uh, I want to point out something. It's a little omission that they made. Not a big deal. but So here's all the parts. Here's the decal sheet. And here it shows you where they go on. So you got the stripes go on the bottom. The cues go on the fin can. Now, one thing they don't show is this. There's actually two decal sheets. Well, stickers, I guess. But it's not... Where do they go? Now, you would assume they just go on this body tube since they're purple and it would, you know, hard to. So, if you look at the face card, which I just happen to have here, they show where it goes. Now, the interesting thing about this is if you look at the original, oh, I accidentally threw it away, the original sticker sheet. It says, copyright 2010 by Quest Aerospace, okay? Now, the new one says, copyright 2021 by RCS, RMC Incorporated, which is their parent company. So, the original Quick Q did not have this. It only had the stripes and stuff. So, they put a new face card in here when they reprocessed it for uh, the new company. So it says Quest by Aerotech, etc. It says Aerotech Quest Division of RCS Ro RMC Rocket Motor Components. Copyright 2021. Okay, so when they redid this, they added in this new sticker. So while we're waiting for that to set up, get out of here and we'll cut this out. Now, when you're gluing together two body tubes, I highly recommend that you then roll them on a flat surface to ensure that you don't accidentally have the tubes connected crooked. Okay. Because if they're out of alignment, then the rocket's not going to fly straight. And that, you know, that's just not good. We've all seen what happens when rockets don't fly straight. There's a crashing, the, the breaking of tubes, the gnashing of teeth. The inevitable rebuild video. So 
So, you know, flying rockets is awesome. Crashing rockets, not quite as fun. I mean, rebuilding isn't all that hard. It's just, it's like anything. You already did the work once. You don't really want to have to do it again. So let's get the other one cut out here real quick. And they, they only recommend two minutes. I would say, you know, give it a solid five minutes or so. I mean, the last thing you want to do is accidentally push that coupler into the body tube too far. Because it is a big pain to get it out. I was repairing a rocket one time that had a body tube crinkle and I was using a coupler to stiffen up the body tube. And I didn't realize at the time that the dowel I was going to use to push it down in there wasn't too short. And so by the time I found the new dowel, uh, it's the only, so the crinkle was say, here, that, and went from here to here. I only got the coupler to right there, so. But, you know, these things happen. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put these two stickers um, on the yellow tube. Luckily, there's backing peel-off slits, so that makes that a lot nicer. Okay, we'll put it up there just just below come on get up there just below the altimeter hole okay, there's one okay let's get the other one and of course they don't have to be exactly opposite I mean you could put both of them on the same side if you want you know, I mean, the face card is just a suggestion. I mean, I have rockets that I have built several copies of, and never once did I paint them the way the face card looks. Okay. They're not diametrically opposite, but they're, they're close-ish. And uh, like horseshoes, close does work. Okay. So now we really only have two things to do. We have to glue the body tubes together. And then we have to glue them onto the fin can. Okay. So. Seems pretty solid. Got to remember which way it's going on. It's going on this way. All right. So we'll, uh, we'll put some glue in here. And as usual, more glue is not necessarily better. What you really want is good coverage. So you get the tube, you know, covered all the way around, and then push in and then twist. Okay, so go ahead. Okay, and then we'll uh, get this out of the way. All right. Now, if a gap forms as you're rolling it, it might be that the tubes weren't perfectly squarely cut. So what I'm doing is, as I push it and roll it, I'm sliding my fingers together. Okay, so. Okay, it's not wobbling or doing anything weird. So uh, I'm going to leave that there. So the next thing to do would be to glue on the fin can, uh, but I want to let this set for a while. 
So I, I think you guys can trust me to glue that on properly. And then the next time we meet, I will be working on the Triton X, which has three body tubes. And I will show you the completed quick cue and then we'll move on and I'll talk about the Triton X and anything we may have to be doing with that. Okay. All right. Well, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next rocket. Okay, everybody, you can see that the quick cue is completely done. Um, the one thing I did have to do extra, so I, you'll notice I have some green tape here on the nose cone. It was so loose that if you just turn the rocket like this, the nose cone would just fall out. Okay, that is too loose. So you want something that, you know, if you shake it, it, it can work its way out like this one's doing. That's fine. You don't want it just to fall out. So it's all ready to go. So it'll uh, take its place in the soon to be launched line. And this is the next one we're going to work on, which is the Triton X. Okay, now this is a kind of different rocket. Now, you will notice that the fin can configuration is exactly the same. Two-part fin can, motor tube, four plastic fins, retaining ring, and motor retention ring. So that's, that's identical to what we saw previously. Okay. What's different now is this one, not only does it have three body tubes, they are actually three different sizes. Now, doing some initial test fitting, so this is the bottom tube, which is where the fin can is going to connect, and then this one will slide in there, okay, and then this one will slide in there, and then this will slide in here, and then this will slide in like this, and this will slide in like that. Now, here's the thing that concerns me. Okay, this is super loose. And also the nose cone, but I mean, it doesn't even really fit. So I'll have to take a look at that and see, do I want to keep this nose cone or do I want to maybe try and find one that fits a little bit better? I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. Now, this nose cone um, is not part of the structure of the rocket per se. So... The rocket actually breaks right here, okay? Because this one is completely hollow, this adapter, okay? So the shock cord is gonna come up through here from the fin can, go out here and come out here. Now the interesting thing is, this has two, yes count them, two parachutes. The way it works is, one parachute is connected to this part, and the other parachute is connected to the shock cord, in other words, the rest of the rocket. Okay, and uh, as before, I'll be replacing the shock cord components uh, with something a little heavier duty. Here's all the stickers that go on here, and we'll have to take a closer look at this nose cone. I'm not sure, it seems a little shaky, and same thing with here. This is just way too loose. I would have thought that the would have fit a little bit better. I'll have to look at this tube. Maybe it's not quite the right size. I mean, I can make it work. You know, that's what tape and glue are for. Nose cone, yeah, a little shaky. Also, it's got a blemish right here, but we'll see. But I'll do the same thing I do with the other ones. I'll uh, build all the fin can components. Then I'll start working on the rest of the rocket, and we'll take a closer look at it. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to leave it as a two parachute configuration, but... Uh, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. This seems like an awful small component to have floating down by itself. You know, that'd be a good way to lose it. So we'll see. All right. So when we come back, I'll be covering any little items out of the ordinary. But beyond that, we'll just get started and we'll do the fin can first and then we'll work on the rest of the rocket. Okay, we're back with the progress on the Triton X build. The fin can is all done. All the shock cords been installed, put together. Last thing I have to do is I need to pass it back through the motor tube before we uh, get ready to glue in this into the tube. So need to scuff this up a little bit. So speaking of the tubes, I went ahead and put the stickers on. And I was taking a closer look at the instructions. And I know something very interesting. 
So this one is called the payload cell. And I've already punched the holes in it and get ready for it to be a payload. But when I looked at the instructions, I was very surprised to find out that the nose cone and the transition are actually glued into the body tube, which means it can't be a payload cell at all, which seems, doesn't seem to make any sense. Got a perfectly good, this is a, basically a BT-50 tube that you could be using for an altimeter or something. And they instead want you to use this tube for the payload section, but that's where you got your parachute. So why use a perfectly good, or waste a perfectly good payload? So we're gonna go ahead and make this a payload cell, and then that's why I went ahead and put this lanyard on the end of this transition. It'll stick up through there. That way if the nose cone happens to pop off, we won't lose anything. <clears throat> so speaking of the nose cone, you may notice that it's white. But if you look at the face card, it should be black. Now, the only reason I even point this out is that these rockets, the quick kits, are supposed to not need any paint. But obviously, uh, that's not black. So, uh, so I'll have to paint that. So one, one little, little task, just uh, a little disappointing. Well, one thing that's very interesting is they do put a caveat here on the back. It says... Color of parts may vary from those shown on package. Um, okay, but if it's not supposed to need any paint, you know, I don't know. Well, we'll see. But we're pretty much uh, the last little bit here. So the last thing we need to do is start gluing these things together. Uh, I still need to come up with a good way of making these fit a little bit better. Because, you, know, you can't just pile in a whole bunch of glue here. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to take a, a piece of, there's plenty of space in here. <clears throat> I think I'll take a piece of body tube, maybe put two small pieces on on either side, and then fit it over the top of it so it's nice and snug when I glue it in. <clears throat> the nose cone, probably just going to have to be paint. Get in there. Uh, I said paint, what am I saying? Tape. So probably a complete wrap of some masking tape will do that. Okay, so when I uh, come back, I'll have assembled this whole thing. This will be paint. Whoops. This will be painted, and then we'll ready to look at the next rocket, which is the Penetrator, which is even longer than the Triton X. Okay. Hey everybody, we just finished up on the Triton X. Uh, it's all been built. The fin can has been connected to the body tubes. Transitions have been put in there. And the last thing we need to do is deal with the payload cell. So uh, there was two problems, one of which was the nose cone was white and super loose. So I had to put two and a half wraps of tape around it. Now it's a nice, you want a nice snug fit here. So it doesn't come out. And then the last thing is we need to uh, glue it to the transition. And that was a pretty loose fit too. So what I did was I glued a couple slices of body tube onto this transition. And I also had to tape it so that it would fit into the um, experimental bay, or i.e. A parachute holder. And so now... Pretty, pretty, pretty decent fit. I mean, it's not super duper snug. Um, I probably could have put some more body tube on here, but I didn't want to make it so hard to get on there that I ended up bending or something. So the last thing you do is uh, put some glue on this, well, inside the tube actually, and then put this on there, and then we will be ready to go. Shock cord's already inside the rocket, and I have the next rocket, which is the penetrator laid out there. So let's do a quick glue up on this, and then... Uh, we can go ahead and move on to the penetrator, which is the last of the uh, quick kits. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing we did before. Um, I'm gonna put a bead of gel super glue and then a bead of, it's not really a bead, but you know, a bunch of the, the uh, liquid. And 
And so what I do is I just run it just, just inside the edge of the body tube. Okay. And then we'll run the liquid in there. And it's going to soak right into the uh, cardboard on the inside. And then that'll provide a nice two-prong grip for uh, the glue to the body tube to the transition. It should be good to go here. I just need to feed it through here without getting glue on everything. Which is almost impossible task, of course. Give it a twist. Then I will look at it with a glass there. It looks pretty good. A flashlight, and you can see that. Then uh, put the nose cone on there. And like I said, I, I like to put a lanyard on here, so in case those kind of happens to pop out, uh, we're not going to lose anything. It's very annoying to see the payload bay, you know, empty, and then realize, oh, I didn't put my lanyard on my whatever you have in there, altimeter or something, and then uh, now that's gone. So let's put it in there, and we'll I'll attach the uh, shock cord later. But oops, there it is. All done. Decent. I like the graphics. Um, it would be better, given that the tubes are already gray, it would have been nice if maybe uh, the background had been clear on these. I did have a couple problems. With these these two up here didn't want to stick. But uh, pretty easy rocket to build. Like I said, fin can, exactly the same as the other ones. And so we're all done with that one. And now we'll move on to the final one, which is the penetrator here. Okay. It's uh, pretty long. <clears throat> uh, this tube is, I think this one's 17 and a half inches long altogether. And this one is 15 inches. Now, I thought that they had been damaged, but it turned out that it was just the way the light was, when I was holding the plastic <clears throat> in the, uh, there, the, the bins on here. And so it turned out that they, you know, they weren't damaged, so they're perfectly fine. So this has got a 35 millimeter tube, non-standard, and a 30 millimeter tube, non-standard. So here's the transition. And of course, you always want to do the test. Okay, well, so that's going to require some tape, definitely. Okay, this will be glued on, I assume, given that this is solid, my guess is that you're going to put the parachutes in here. I'd have to look at the instructions for sure. And then the nose cone. Oh, actually. I mean, you're going to want to put some tape on this. Of course. So this is a pretty big, we'll, pop, we'll punch some holes in here. It's a pretty big payload bay. Let's see what the instructions say. Um, so the same as the other ones, right? There's the instructions. It comes with the two uh, sets of information about launching, um, some altitude, packing, and our safety code, etc. So, you know, Quest does a good job informing you as the buyer of what's what. Okay, so looking at this, now this one also has two chutes, uh, like the Triton X did. Uh, you know, probably overkill. They kind of like all my rocket attached together so it's easier to find. Uh, once again, they recommend the plastic cement. The fin can build is exactly the same. So, you know, I'm not going to bother to show that again. And this, uh, gluing it in, okay, same process there. Um, like I said, I think building the entire fin can and everything first before you glue it in. And then they say, now, this one's a little different. Now, remember on the Triton X, it basically had you glue the nose cone and the transition to what was supposed to be the payload bay. Now, they do the same thing here, except they do have a little note. To use as a payload bay, do not glue the nose. Okay, maybe that would have been a good thing to include on the Triton. Okay, that shows you where all the stickers go, and there are a lot of stickers. So, once again, you know, given that the tube's already orange, maybe it would have been nicer since these two oranges don't match, not even close. It might have been nicer if... Uh, all the lines and the other things were not on an orange background. 
because it actually kind of doesn't look as good, I don't think. But okay. But you don't have to paint these. I mean, you could always try and find a shade of orange that looks like this. So, all right. Everything else exactly the same. All right. So, when we next meet, I'll have the fin can all done. And then we'll... We'll look at what we need to do to finish this up. We'll be we'll be punching some holes in this. Uh, we'll be putting some tape on this, and uh, I mean everything is the right color. At least it's not probably. Although, uh, I mean it's got some blow mold uh, mold problems as usual. Uh, I may I may paint this black. I don't know. It looks okay. I mean it looks fine, but um, I'm really surprised. I mean I just you know. This is just, I mean, it's ridiculous that that just falls out. I mean, given the fact that you're supposed to use Quest motors or Aerojet motors that or Aerotech motors that um, chuff, I mean, a heavy chuff could pop the rocket up a few inches and that could fly right out if you don't put some tape on this. So, you know, come on, guys, quality control. If you're going to have a 35 millimeter tube, at least have a transition that... You know, is at least moderately snug. I mean, once you sand down these lines, it's going to be even looser. So uh, we'll be putting some tape around this. So I do like the fact that this has where you could cut the ends off if you wanted to make it completely hollow. But it also has a place where I can hook a lanyard that goes up to the payload bay. So, all right. So next time we'll have the fin can all built. And then we'll be finishing up with this, putting the stickers on. And then we're going to have five rockets to go out and launch. And then I'll do a final sort of overall review of what I think about the quick kits. You know, are they worth the money? Um, do they really, are they quick? We already showed that they are. I mean, most of these are pretty easy. I mean, some of the problems you're going to run into with this taping and other things is going to add a few minutes to the build. But you can easily put these together in an hour. All right, when we come back, we'll be... Almost done. Okay, so we're back, and you may notice that we're a little bit more than almost done. Um, so I built the fin can, and I was looking at the stickers. I thought, oh, let's see how hard these to put on. So I started putting them on, and then I punched the holes in the... Uh, payload bay and then next thing you know I'm gluing things together so um, so we're all done pretty much I do want to point out a few things so here's the my new shock cord that I always replace here <clears throat> excuse me so you may notice that the fins are on backwards uh, now I did that because I like the look of these this type of installation rather than the upside down one. The upside down one is purely um, for looks, has nothing to do with aerodynamics or anything. And in fact, this is a better way to fly than the other ones. So I, I put them on the way I like. You know, they fit either way, it doesn't matter. So no big deal there. So we have our lanyard and everything. So I did go ahead and uh, paint the nose cone after I sanded it. It was all, had sanding marks all over it. And now it's got dust all over it. And I had to put some uh, tape around it, and I had to put a lot of tape around this, keep it from falling out. Um, but you know, now this fits pretty well, and I don't think we're going to have any problems with it flying. Now, I do want to point out a few things that I found when I looked a little bit more closely at the instructions. So, you remember this has two parachutes. Okay, so here's the Triton X. And it says, okay, this tells you how to put the parachutes together. And that's going to be the last step. Now, personally, I feel that a beginner's kit, you shouldn't have to build the chute. Okay? I mean, the last thing you want to do is have someone build a simple kit and then mess up building the parachute and then have the kit get destroyed for some reason. But we'll show you how you build that. It's pretty simple. And so they say, you know, build a chute. And then they say, repeat for the second parachute. And they show you exactly where the two parachutes connect. One connects to the shock cord, and the other one connects to the uh, transition. Okay. So, um, 
I thought something similar, and in fact, so these are the shock cords that came with the penetrator, and you'll notice that there are one, two elastic ones. And so I thought, oh, okay, well maybe the elastic ones, one goes on the payload side, one goes on the, bot, the regular rocket body. So I thought, huh, okay, well, maybe I should take a closer look at that. Uh, not so much. And in fact, they act like there aren't two. So now they do have two listed here, and two, they show two sets of shroud lines, but they don't show two white shock cords. And in fact, if you look at the instructions, they only show you building one chute, and they have that one chute attached to the nose cone, which you probably already glued in to the payload bay. So definitely major mistake here in the instructions. Now, if you look closely down here at the step six, they do actually show two chutes here, and it looks like they're both attached to the transition, but it's kind of hard to tell. Now, if you go to the next page, you'll see that they, have, they actually now have it looking the way the Triton X did it, with one attached to the shock cord coming up from the body, and the other one attached to the transition going to the payload. So, a little confusing here. Um, I'm not really sure who looks at these things to verify that they're correct, but uh, they're slacking off on it. So not too impressed there. But overall, it was still pretty easy to build. Uh, I did have a problem, and I had this on every rocket. At least one sticker didn't really want to stick. Now you can see how different the oranges are, really. Now, on the card, they show them all being the same exact color. Now this is just probably, it's not probably an actual picture, it's just a drawing. Um, so, I don't know, not, not impressed. But I am sure that it will fly just fine. And so, the next thing we're gonna do, now that everything's all glued together and ready to go, I will reiterate one thing that I had mentioned previously. I really don't like a really long rocket like this having its only launch lug down here at the bottom. Okay, because you know, you're, if there's a little wind, the, the rocket could cock over sideways, or if you've got a joint in your launch rod, it could snag on it and turn sideways. Uh, I really wish these things had another uh, launch lug up here someplace. We'll have to see. After I launch them, we'll see how it goes. Um, if I have any kind of problem, I may retrofit it with another launch lug. And I would probably put it either up here or possibly here or possibly here. I don't know, I'd find out where the CG is. Um, but you know, overall, you know, we got a nice big payload bay. You can put all kinds of stuff in there. And it was really easy to build, but the instructions, once again, I just, I don't understand. And the fitment. What, you know, what are they thinking? Okay, so next thing we're going to do is build a parachute. It's pretty simple, um, and it's not one of those things that you have to do very much, because almost every rocket these days comes with a pre-made chute. Uh, I've ordered a bunch of nylon chutes, and they all come pre-made also. So in addition to the regular build that they show, we're going to uh, put a snap swivel on it, of course. Okay. So when we come back, we'll be building a chute. Okay, so we're back and we have the parachute all laid out here on the workbench. So you can see there's dotted lines around where to cut this. Now, conventional wisdom says you should really use a straight edge and a hobby knife or razor blade to cut those. And here's why. Okay, if you get a little nick here while you start cutting and stop cutting, okay, that's a hot spot that could cause it the plastic to tear. Okay, uh, I'm not going to do that. I'll just go ahead and cut them out with a pair of scissors since that's what most people will probably do. Because um, if you look at it, it says, use scissors or a sharp hobby knife. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and use scissors and I'll cut around it. Now it does have you a little diagram here. So it actually shows you, in addition to what's in the instructions, it says here, step one, cut it out. Step two, use the gripper, that's these things, 
you can't really see very well, but there's a little cutout in the center where there's going to be a hole. You can see it's going to, they're going to go right here. Okay. Then it says to punch a hole with a sharp pencil. I'm not going to do it that way. Um, okay. And then up here, step three, squeeze each gripper very hard. And then use the shroud lines, cut into equal lengths. Okay. There's three shroud lines here. And, they, and the way they go is here to here, here to here, here to here. Okay. Now that is different than the way Estes does it. Estes puts, you know, here to here and then here to there and then here to there. Okay, we can't do that because of the length problem. They're not all long enough. To, there's no, no long one in the center. So we're just going to do it the way they say. So let's go ahead and we'll get cutting here. And you can cut it in either direction. And you'll see as I go through this with the scissors, there's a whole bunch of start and stop points that could eventually become problems. Okay. This is you know, why you should go ahead and should really use a straight edge. In case you heard my air conditioner running, that's because it's 106 Fahrenheit here today. Come on, boy. This really thin plastic is very difficult to cut with scissors because it's all over the place. Which is why I think you should just, I'm not going to cut that off, lay it down and then use a hobby knife and a razor, or I'm sorry, straight edge. I mean, I can't even remember the last time I uh, cut out a parachute and made one manually. It had been a long time. So you can, if you got a nice sharp pair of scissors, you can glide along the edge like you do when you're cutting wrapping paper. One of the problems with the way the cameras are set up on phones is that uh, they give a good coverage this way, but not so much this way. And so, you know, the tendency is always to pull things toward you. I know that when I'll be working on some of my model railroad stuff, I'm working in about the first four inches of my workbench. And so, uh, so there's always this tendency to pull things towards me. Of course, I've noticed that if I set the camera up, then I'm constantly pushing things away from me. So you can't see them there either. Okay, so we got that all done. All right, so we're all cut out here. Uh, I did a, you know, I did an okay job, I guess. I mean, this is a beginner rocket, so. You know. Now, if they say, this is what's interesting is, you're supposed to not take the center along with it, but they, they are not punched out very well. But actually that's gonna be okay. I'm not gonna worry about it. Because I have a secret weapon for punching these holes. Okay, so now I tell you to firmly grip them. So that's what I'm gonna do. Firmly grip them. Of course I'm dragging the shroud lines everywhere. 
Okay, so now it says to poke a hole in it with a pencil. And that would be okay if the center wasn't in there, but the center didn't want to come out, so rather than mess around with it. So I'm going to use this, okay? This is a paper punch, except it makes 1 16th inch holes. Okay. Let me see how tiny that is. Perfect for getting the shroud line through. Um, I normally punch um, eight inch holes in my body tubes, but my friend Kevin, he uses a 16th and swears by it. So I figured, what the heck, I'll buy another one. And so maybe on my smaller tubes, I'll use a 16th inch one. And on larger tubes, I'll use the eighth inch one. Okay, there we go. And as usual, you know, they don't have to be perfect. Okay. Now, it says to put the shroud line through and then tie a double knot. And then tie it to the next nearest side. Okay, so let's... Pull out one of these shroud lines. And uh, I didn't practice, so uh, maybe a bit of fumbling here. Okay, so let's. Uh... Oh, I'm sorry if I'm getting it out of view. Of course, I have it. Okay. All right, so, oops. Okay, so it's through. Come on. Boy, I tell you, operator error big time. Okay, so we got it through. So now it says tie a double knot in it. Now, when you're a righty, you want to try, it's kind of hard to, because you're trying to, trying to use this side to go around things. Ah. See, this is why a beginner shouldn't be subjected to this. So I reiterate that this is something that beginners shouldn't have to do. Okay, so I'll take some scissors and cut off the excess. And then they say, put it in the next hole over. Yes, I am sticking it in my mouth in case you were wondering. Come on. Oh, maybe I should have used the eighth inch hole punch. Outsmarted myself. Oh, there we go. Okay, come on. I'll tell you, the combination of big fat fingers and tiny little strings, not great. Okay, one down. When I replay this for you guys, I will probably, in fact, I probably should just cut off the video and give you a voila done moment here. And uh, I think I will want to do that. Rather than speed it up, I'm just going to go and cut the video. And when it comes back, I'll go, voila, we're done.
Okay, we're back and voila, we're done. Okay, so now not all of these is going to be the same length because every time I tied a knot, one was a little longer, one was a little shorter, etc. Okay, so now we want to gather them all together and we want to attach this snap swivel. Okay, so what I'm going to try and do is gather the shroud lines. And then try and make them as equal as possible. Okay. Well, it's not going to be all that easy to do. Okay. One way you can do it is by folding. Oh, there's my AC again. Okay. You can fold the parachute so that all the shroud lines line up, okay? So you get them, as, get them as even as you can. You'll notice this one is slightly shorter. That happens. It doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, the better it is, the more perfect you get it, so to speak, uh, the more evenly the, the, the uh, parachute will hang. So try and get it. Now you see, like, one of them just happens to be longer. Okay. So I'm going to twist them. Then I'm going to try and pass them through the eye of this. There we go. Okay. Now, there's a couple ways you can do this. You can loop it back around through the chute, press the whole chute through these holes, but that will make them a different length. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tie a knot here where they will be as much the same length as they can be. And I think to do this, I will use one of my not tying tools. So I'll pass this through, grab all the shroud lines and come back with it. Okay, that didn't work. You're going to want to tie this again. Now, an alternative way of doing this is while you're putting the shroud lines on is to pass each one of them through the eye of this. Now, I'm not sure how tight this knot is going to stay. So, this is one of those instances, since, since this does not stretch, this would be one of those places where it would be good to put a little white glue on it, on this string. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then after I do that, I'm going to cut off the extra thing. Now, you, like I said, you could have looped it around through there. But here's the problem with doing that. If you loop it through there, and then something weird happens with the way the parachute is spinning around or whatever, it can actually unloop itself. Okay. All right, so that's good. Okay, I'm gonna chop off the uh, extra bit of string here. 
and then we have a parachute. Okay, so we have a parachute all ready to go. Now, I don't know if I'm going to actually fly it using this chute. I'll probably, probably, actually probably use a 15 incher that I have, but, uh, so that's it. Okay, so we've done all the building, we've built all the rockets. Now, obviously, you didn't build the Seeker, since I had already built that, and I didn't buy another one. So the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to have my evaluation. So I'm going to break it down into three parts. One is going to be components, one is going to be instructions, and one is going to be ease of construction. Okay, components, I'm talking about how good are the components, do the sticker stick, do the tubes fit, etc. Instructions, how accurate are they, and how easy is it to build a rocket when you follow them exactly? Are they lacking anything? And then construction is sort of a combination of those, right? How easy was it to build based on the parts that were, you were provided and the instructions that you were given? Okay. So I'm going to start off with sort of some overall views, and then we'll go to each individual rocket. All right. So when we come back, uh, we'll do the evaluation. Hey everybody, so we're all done with all the constructions, all the modifications, all the all the, and here they all are, the Astra, Quick Q, Seeker, Triton X, and Penetrator. So the last thing I'm going to do is go over sort of my evaluation of these different rockets and the quick kits in general. So since I decided to rank them in three different areas, one of the things I decided to do was make sure I didn't actually double ding Quest when it came to a fault that could cause two different areas to get negative values. So I'm ranking them in components and instructions and ease of construction. So one of the things I didn't want to have to do is because some parts didn't fit well, say not only were the parts bad, but also the ease of construction was affected. So that didn't seem fair. So I'm gonna start off with components. Okay, and I give it an overall ranking of 7.5. Now, one of the major dings is right here. Okay, this, this bottom launch lug thing. Okay, now there's nothing wrong with that. A number of rockets have this fin can based launch lug. The problem is when you have extremely long rockets like the Triton X or Triton X and the Penetrator especially, you really run into a possible problem if it's a little windy of it pivoting on the launch pad and hanging up on the launch rod or going in a weird direction because there's no support up here. I mean, you should really have on a rocket this long, you should have two launch lugs. One up here, same thing with the Triton X. You should probably have another one up here. A little bit difficult because of the sticker. Um, so, you no, know, that, that's my major ding in that area. Now, some of the other things that I found from the component standpoint uh, was obviously poorly fitting transitions and nose cones. If you're going to have specialized, you know, this is BT35, or excuse me, T35, T30, um, which are unique to Quest, at least from what I can tell. Um, if you're going to have tubes that aren't standard, your transitions and nose cones and things should fit well in them, right? They're, they're your tubes, so your parts should fit. But we saw repeatedly that nose cones just fall out, transitions just fall out. You know, they're, they're complete loose fit, just totally inappropriate. Now, the other thing, uh, and I didn't quite understand this one either, which is you have stickers that you're putting on rockets that are already painted, okay? or the tubes at least are already colored. So you would expect that the sticker background would either be one of two things. Either it would be clear, or it would be the same color as the tube. Now, the Astra is pretty close. 
Okay, but in the quick queue, and they used the clear background, which I thought was great. Uh, Seeker, black on black, pretty nice. Trite necks, come on, these grays are not even close. And the penetrator, the oranges are way off. When you look at the face card, you see a smooth rocket where the stickers are the same color and all you see is these lines. And I, I think that's very poor construction technique, if you, or excuse me, uh, design, right? Because these should match. I mean, they're your rockets. Now, some of the parts, a couple nose cones had excessive flash. Now, that's not a big deal to fix, except it's supposed to already be painted. So if you're busy scrubbing away on a nose cone to get rid of the flash, you're gonna have a light colored mark that's gonna to totally distort the color scheme of your rocket. Okay, so that, that was kind of annoying. I did have to paint a couple nose cones because they were pretty bad. And the last thing, which is you know, nit noid, was that one of the nose cones, which was supposed to be black, was white. Now, there was a caveat on the back of the face card. It says some parts may be different color, but you know, come on. How hard is it to get a black nose cone when the other ones have black nose cones? Okay, so 7.5 for components. Instructions. Uh, that is the worst part of these. Okay, there were some major flaws. And remember, we're talking about beginner rockets, not people that have a lot of experience. We're talking about beginner rockets that people are going to be following the instructions. If the instructions are too hard to follow or wrong, then it doesn't make any sense. How, how can you possibly say this is a beginner rocket when beginners can't build them? So the number one problem was the fin can. Okay. The instructions for building the fin can and installing it, they were terrible. They made things way more difficult. The first thing they have you do is tie the shock cord onto the fin can. So then anytime you're doing anything with the fin can, you have this shock cord you're dragging around. And then when you're trying to glue it into the body tube, right? Instead of passing it back through the fin can to get it out of the way, they tell you to jam it down into the body tube. That made no sense. So that, that was terrible. Okay. Other things, so Triton X, it has something right here called payload cell, right? But what do they have you do? They want you to glue in the nose cone and the transition. Well, so that's not a payload cell. It says it has a big payload. So but is it this? This is where the parachutes go. So how, you know, doesn't make any sense again. Right, that, that, was, that was kind of foolish. Uh, on the penetrator, they solved that problem by, by saying you could make this into a uh, payload bay. But the penetrator was just as bad in its own way in that it has two parachutes like Triton X does, but the instructions for building the chutes and installing them were wrong. In fact, it, it only mentioned one chute, and it had you hooking it to the nose cone, which is not where it would go. Only by looking at a different page, not even part of the instructions, part of the launching stuff, was it show them put into the body tube. So that, that was terrible. And then another one, uh, kind of a minor thing, was the quick queue had two sheets of decals, or stickers, but they only showed one in the instructions. And you had to look on the face card to find out where they went. So kind of a weird oversight. I mean, if you're gonna add in a second, you should at least adjust the thing. So 7.0 on the instructions. And then last of all, ease of construction. I mean, these are beginner rockets. They should be fairly easy to build. So like I said, not rehashing things I already found. The big problem here was having to build your own parachute. Okay, this is a beginner, probably never built a parachute, probably doesn't exactly understand what they're doing when they do make it, okay? So do you wanna have your beginner rocket crash to the ground because they built the parachute wrong? Yeah, see, once again, that doesn't make any sense. A beginner rocket should have something that is complicated as building a chute already done. I mean, there are tons of places that provide chutes that are already made. Or all you have to do is, you know, put a snap swivel on the end of it. So that was kind of ridiculous. Now, the fin can, uh, there was a little problem with that. There was a two-part fin can with a, with a seam, right? And then you snap in and then glue in the fins. 
Well, I found that where the seam was, the hole where you're supposed to put the fin in was a little too small. So you kind of had to force the fin to pop in. And that was on pretty much every rocket, except for, I think maybe the Astra. Um, so, uh, you know, maybe a little nitnoid little complaint, but once again, I mean, fitment is something that's important. I didn't knock it off on the components, but I am knocking it off on the construction because you put the glue on there if you don't dry fit it like you know, an experienced person would do, but a beginner might not do that. That could cause a problem. And then lastly uh, is this, okay? This is model cement. Now, there's nothing wrong with using model cement to build things made out of plastic. It makes perfect sense. However, as I pointed out during the earlier part of the video, we're talking two hours to fully cure. Okay. These are supposed to be able to be built in 15 to 45 minutes, which I showed using the stopwatch. Uh, but there is no possible way you can build it in that time. So as an experiment, when I built the penetrator uh, to make the fin can, I actually used model cement. I didn't discuss that earlier because I was just, just testing a theory I had. So first of all, you had to tape the fin can together because there's no instant grab on the model cement, okay? So second of all, I thought, okay, after 30 minutes, I'm gonna take the tape off and see how strong the joint is. Well, it came right apart in my fingers. So put a little more glue on, just to double check, taped it up, left it for an hour, and then it was pretty much good to go. But that's way outside the scope of 45 minutes to build these things. So I wasn't too impressed about that. So I gave it, you know, 8.5 for ease of construction, you know, not counting the other things double. And so overall score is 7.67. Now that's not bad. Uh, one of the things that I do appreciate is rocket manufacturers making beginner rockets, right? That's how people get into, that's why for model railroading, they make train sets where you get a locomotive, you get some cars, you get some track, you get power supply, so it's kind of an all-in-one thing. And they do have starter kits, just like SC's has starter kits. There are starter kits, I think, with the Quick Q and with the Astra, where you can get the whole thing. So that's good. I did appreciate that. Okay. Now, are these a good value? So let's look at cost. Okay, so cost-wise, the Astra 3, the Quick Q, and the Seeker have a list price of $18.99. And the Triton X and the Penetrator have list prices of $19.99. So it seems a little pricey, but let's compare, okay? And SDs makes a bunch of beginner rockets. So let's see, so the Ghost Seeker, which is very much like one of these, it has a plastic fin can with uh, fins that you slot into it. It has a transition. Uh, it has a payload bay, a clear payload bay, as a matter of fact. And that rocket costs $21.99 retail. The Alpha 3, which is a much smaller rocket, even than the Astra 3, that costs $23.99. Now, uh, I've never built one, so I don't know exactly what goes into that, but I'm assuming it has a plastic fin can, maybe all-in-one fin can. Uh, it has a plastic nose cone. So... Okay, that, okay, we're talking about the same thing here. The Dragonite, which I believe is a snap-together rocket, um, $18.99. Now, the really good deal on the SD side is the Athena, $14.99, already built. So that's a good deal. And then Chiller is another one, similar, plastic fin can, nose cone, $18.99. So, now there are discounts available, of course, but I'm just saying from the retail pricing of these things, they're very competitive. And so that's, you know, I appreciate that. I mean, they're, they're not pricing themselves out of the beginner market. Uh, if they cleaned up their instructions and their components, uh, these things would be in the nine range. Now, the only one I've flown is the Seeker, and it's been quite a while ago. And I really want to get out and fly these, but the weather here has been super windy. And uh, as you know, I fly in a little park, and there's just no way that I want to lose these things because it's kind of hard to um, say, oh, and here is a successful flight when it lands in a tree or on the road or something. So um, this may be the end of this video. And if it is, I thank you for watching and I hope that I provided you with some good information. 
Uh, maybe we get lucky and after I stop talking, another part will start up and it'll show the launches of these things. Uh, that's what I want to do. Um, if I can just kind of get the timing good with the weather and my availability. So once again, uh, thank you. I hope this video was helpful and we'll see if I get to do some launches. And then I do have another plan for some more of the quick, or excuse me, the Quest uh, beginner rockets, not, not the quick kits, but the other ones that have plastic fin cans and plastic nose cones, etc. just to see what they're like compared to these. Don't know when I'm going to get to that. Uh, i got some other stuff to do. Plus, I have to you know, live a life. But I just wanted to say thanks again for watching, and I hope this was informative. Hey everybody, JC here. Uh, looks like I'm gonna get to launch these uh, quick kits anyway. Uh, weather is great, there's hardly any wind, no one out here. Uh, some guys mowing lawn, but you know, that's the way it works sometimes. So first up is the Astra 3. And hopefully we'll have a nice quick, good flight. Okay, and we are launching in five, four, three, two, one. Uh, there we go. That shoot looked a little tangled at first, but uh, yeah, it's on a B64. So there we go. Okay. Just a few hundred feet, just you know, test flight. Oh, I see what happened. The uh, that caught around a fin. Oh well, that happens. Okay, so let's uh, take a look at it here. Oops! Oops! Turn on, I guess. All right, 290 feet, that seems about right. All right, on to the next one. Okay, this is the quick queue, also going on a B64. So, once again, no wind, so hopefully we'll have a good flight. Okay, we are launching in five, four, three, two, one. Uh oh, well, hopefully I won't go into those trees. It looks like it's not going to. All right, another good flight. Interesting, the rod was pointing the other way. There was no wind, and yet it launched back over my head. But expect to be the same, you know, 200 to 300 range. Okay, let's see what we got here. All right, well, do the turn off, turn back on thing. This it seems to make it pop up right away. Two hundred 
246. Okay, that's perfectly consistent. A little bit bigger than the Astra 3. All right. Okay, time for the third flight. Now, this is the Seeker. Uh, it's on a B64. Now, I didn't build it for this video, but since it is a quick kit, I figured I would go ahead and launch it with the rest of them. And I'm trying out my 14 inch Quest chute that I built. We'll see if my skills got rusty or not. All right, so launching in five, four, three, two, one. All right, that looks like it did okay. Coming down right on top of me. Well, okay, a little bit close to the pad, but it's pretty good. All right, so. Guess I'm not completely incompetent when it comes to building those things. Okay. Everything looks good. So, get the old altitude here. Hundred and eighty. That makes perfect sense. It's a heavier rocket. Okay. Well, on to, on to the next one. Okay, so next up is the Triton X. Uh, we're going up to a C63 on this because it's uh, heavier than the Seeker was. And so with a B64, I don't want to pile it into the ground. C63, probably put it up there around 400 feet maybe. So we'll see. And uh, I am utilizing the payload bay for the altimeter because, you know, it's a payload bay. All right, so launching in five, Four, three, two, one. Okay, that C six three was perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna go over my head a little bit. Oh, maybe not. Okay, it's gonna, sorry about the sun. Okay, it's uh, like eight feet away from me. I always like it when I don't have to walk too much. When I go out with Kevin, it's usually a mile or two. Okay, so let's get this back to the lunch bench. And uh, Okay, so we set the camera down. To give you guys a beautiful view of the landscape. Okay, what do we got here? Four twenty six. Okay, that's right about what I was expecting. Pretty nice. Good flight. Okay, so this is the final flight of the day. The wind has picked up just a tiny bit. So this is the penetrator. So I have it angled over a little bit and it is kind of hanging away from the launch rod because that one launch lug at the bottom, which I don't like, but I already whined about that earlier. So, okay. So we're going on a C63 launching in five, four, three, two, one.
All right, there we go, nice. Probably just under 400 feet, 350, 370 maybe. But it's pretty heavy rocket, almost four ounces, so. Sorry about the sun, but you know, it's a magnet for rockets. It's a rule, they have to fly into the sun. Oh, almost landed in that one little tree. Right, let me turn this other camera off and let me go check it out. All right. That would have been annoying. On an earlier set of launches, I had one that, from what I could tell, it just touched one limb. So I used a 15 inch shoot on this. You can see that there's really no reason for two shoots for this rocket. Well, I don't know, maybe, maybe if you're landing on rocks or something, but you know, who would do that? All right, so let's get it back to the workbench. Or I should say the flight center. But yeah, beautiful day out here today. Unfortunately, I have something to do later this morning, so I'm not gonna be able to launch any more rockets. I would have loved to give you guys some bonus videos. So, all right, let me get the altimeter out while you enjoy the scenery for just a second. Oops, sorry about that. Okay, so. Acceleration was 6.6 .6 G's. Interesting. Okay. All right. So let's uh, let's get this thing focused in. So you can see this. 351 feet. That's about what I was expecting. So another successful flight. Okay. So that wraps up the flight for the quick kits. All successful. Um, a good value, I think.